hello, hello. Hey, goddess. Aviola here, and welcome to the Rich Goddess Spiritpreneur Accelerator Series, where I will be featuring, right here on the podcast, master gurus who are also master teachers in my Rich Goddess Spiritpreneur Accelerator program. Now, this program is an eight-week spiritual business course for coaches, healers, intuitive gurus to help you to start, grow, or save your mission and business, help you to build a tribe, and to call in your abundance fast. So, if you want to stay in the loop for this program, just join my free spiritual business success camp at unblockmybusiness.com, unblockmybusiness.com, where new free lessons are uploaded often, and you will also receive information for if you're ready to go to the next level on how to join the Rich Goddess Spiritpreneur Accelerator. In that program, I'm so pleased to share with you social media coach for spiritual entrepreneurs, Carla Gadet, I love her name, hopefully I'm pronouncing it well, is a master coach who will be teaching a session on social media marketing just for you. But today on the podcast, we're in for a treat because Carla Gadit is here. Welcome, Carla. Goddess Carla, welcome. Hi. Hi, Aviola. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. All right. So let me tell them a little bit about you, my sister. So Goddess Carla is a social media coach for spiritual entrepreneurs and light workers. She's also an intuitive empath, a spiritual entrepreneur, a blogger and empowerment coach for empaths, and she's following her purpose of bringing light and guidance to other people's lives. Her career in social media started nearly 15 years ago when Blogger.com was at its peak. I remember that. And I was blogging then. And Facebook was only an idea in Mark Zuckerberg's mind. I love it. Carla studied sociology and marketing and communication and has always been fascinated by how social media is a great way to reach people anywhere, anytime. So, Carla, that is your your professional credentials. Tell us, who is the woman behind that bio? Wow. <laughs> who is the woman? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I, I consider myself, first of all, a free spirit. Um, I, I must say I've been in a massive spiritual journey myself, uh, of awakening, of self-discovery. And uh, I, I have to say nowadays I live from my heart, from the heart center, from how I feel, what I feel from my truth, my inner truth. And uh, that's, uh, it's not just in business, but in everything, in, in relationships, in my, in my personal life, in everything. That's, that's, that's my truth. That's where I live from. So... I, I consider myself as well a nature lover. I love to be as an empath. <laughs> I love to be around nature. I also, I am a mother. I have a, a, a my beautiful daughter, Heavy Six, was six last month. Um, uh-huh. And <laughs> I, am, I am originally from Portugal. I have uh, relocated to the UK about 10 years ago. Uh, it, it feels like ages ago, <laughs> actually. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, uh, I, I believe, I believe truly in that. I believe in truly in living, living from the heart, living from, from what you feel and feeling good, feeling good, being, being in a space of joy, basically. Carla, you are just so magical and your energy is so beautiful. Uh, Carla is, as, as you said, you're based in the UK. And for our listeners, I just got back from the UK literally like just a few days ago. Um, and so next time I'll have to meet Carla in person. And so, Carla, you, I've been reading and watching videos about your spiritual awakening, which you were generous enough to share with your audience. Can you tell people a bit about this. Um, I think that it's important to talk about because a lot of people don't feel comfortable, you know, or feel nervous or scared to share about their spiritual awakening. And I appreciate how open you are. So first, tell people who may not know what is a spiritual awakening and how do you know if you are experiencing one? 
Okay, so t- to me, it was I, I didn't know I was experiencing one when I when I went through it years ago. I had no idea. I just felt it this something's going on. This is very weird. I felt like I'm always losing the plot many times uh, because it's it's a massive shift. I feel like I was being prepared for it all my life. Uh, I had glimpses of awakening all my life, but there that was a, there was a time when I got pregnant for my daughter that I started connecting more with a heart center. I had to go from a place of doing into a place of being and feeling and then and, and connect with my intuition, connect with how I feel. And that led me to a journey that <laughs> never, yeah, I, I, I used to say that the veil was lifted and uh, I started paying attention to how I feel and to things that I wasn't paying attention before. And I started realizing that life is so much more than working in a job nine to five or pleasing others or doing what you think you have to do, what you should do, etc., which are just lead you to things like depression and, and not feeling, feeling a void, basically. And I just realized that it's not in the external things. It's inside of you. You have to start listening to yourself and start finding your truth inside yourself. And that, that was my journey. That was when I realized that I was seeing things and, and feeling things that I wasn't before. And then it led me to a magical journey of uh, people coming into my life and to help me on, the, on that journey. Just, just I, I didn't have to do anything. I just had to allow this to happen. And it just it just did, basically. And, and I feel it's, it's, it's very important. And that's why I shared my story. It, it, it's for that reason, Abila. It's because I know there are people that don't feel comfortable and going through that or they feel like they're not normal <laughs> or something, etc. They're not going to be accepted for for feeling this way, etc. And I feel it's very important to share because it is it is normal and it it's something that we have to accept and acknowledge and allow it to happen. And uh, I believe that if I do that, I'm being a mirror for other people to feel comfortable to do it as well and to accept themselves and what they're going through. Very powerful, very powerful. And I love the language that you use to describe the feeling because that it is, that is what it is. And, and when you are in the middle of a spiritual awakening, which can be in an instant, it can be over days, it can be over weeks, months, or years. Yes. You often don't know it at first. They, things just feel First, there's a drastic shift and the, the lifting of the veil is exactly, you know, that is the, the best description that a veil had been lifted. I also love that you said that you went from the feeling of, of doing to being, which is exactly what it is. Can you share more about that, please? Well, I, when I, actually, when I relocated to London, I to the UK. I, I went to London. I live in London many years, and I was in an energy of doing, which is which is London, <laughs> basically. Yeah. It's very career oriented, very masculine energy. Very just make it happen, just do it, etc. So I was very much focused on that, but I wasn't happy. <laughs> I wasn't happy at all, and. Uh, and there was something missing and there was that void that many times we try to fill that void with external things, you know, and, but it's just, it's an empty bucket, you know, because it, it just, everything you, you try to fill it, it just goes in the bucket, just goes in the void. And, and, and it, I just start to realize this is not living. And so when I, when I had that spiritual awakening and, when, when the, that time that happened, I had to connect with feeling. I had to connect with my intuition. I had to rely many times on and, and trust how I feel. And I started to realize that um, I was feeling that void, you know, and uh, just just by connecting with myself and just by honoring and listening and honoring how I feel and following how I feel, I was starting to feel that voice from inside. And and it started to feel really good and started to feel really great. And and I I just and I stepped into I, I feel I feel like I connected with a feminine energy that I wasn't connecting before. 
and which is an energy of just being, just allowing, just just flowing instead of pushing and forcing. No, it, it's much more of uh, being in that state of of, of being, of flowing, and. Um, and that's what I did I, in my spiritual awakening. I stepped into that energy and it just felt good. And But then throughout, because my spiritual awakening, I, I, I believe that we we are awakening every day. It doesn't stop. Yes. It's, every day we are stepping into a higher consciousness. And I've started to feel the need to balance both energies, the masculine and the feminine, because you cannot live on one or the other. You have to balance mm-hmm. both have to know when to step into one or when to step into the other, when to step into the doing, when to step into the being, you know, and uh, and that, that, that has been my, my journey as well, is to balance both energies and being first, but then doing from a place of being, from a place of inspiration, not from uh, forcing or pushing, but from a place of uh, when you feel inspired. Yes, this is such an important conversation because I, I I think that I had a very similar experience and so do many women today where, we, you know, mas- the masculine energy is so much a part of our experience. You know, I'm from New York and, and I love London because it's very much the same energy that I grew up in is this very like masculine energy do 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 go 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 but it's very unhealthy for us to stay completely in that state and I also had to learn to balance and I'm still learning how to balance and find the harmony between the masculine and the feminine because then when I stepped fully more fully into embracing my feminine energy of being intuitive and embracing myself as an empath and you know all of that side of things my intuition I then almost became where I couldn't function because I was all being no do and so it's the dance between the two isn't it yes <laughs> yes I, I think yeah. the best of the extremes <laughs> Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think a big part of your gift, Carla, is that you also work with women like us who are empaths. And um, we were speaking a little bit before we got on the line about how a lot of women in our tribe, you know, a lot of women in my tribe have been reporting to me, women who are in my Spiritpreneur Warrior Business Sisterhood program, talking to me about this past year and a half, past two years, past year and a half, really, feeling ungrounded, you know, because we're so porous and we take in the energy of everything and everyone around us. And the world has been in such flux. And if you don't have a strong way to protect your magic, as I like to say, then you're just kind of caught up in that. Can you talk about, I guess, the care and feeding of empaths? Or if you're an empath, what do you do right now if you're just feeling lost and in chaos? Okay, yeah, so I, yes, I, I do I do work with a lot of empaths, and uh, I am an empath myself. I'm an intuitive empath. I only found out I was an empath when when I had my spiritual awakening, just, just came to me, and just realize, yes, this is how I am. And, and yeah, I've, I've been there myself. I've been there very, very lost, uh, very, very depressed, very lost, and I didn't know what to do. And I was still in that doing <laughs> energy. Uh, so I thought I have to do something. Uh, and, um, what, and what I help, what I help people with, and I, and I feel it, it's very important, is to step into your power. Is to connect with your inner power because I feel a lot of empath, a lot of people that they, they they feel like they have to shield themselves, they have to protect themselves. There, but that that very often that that works, that can work in a, in a short term, but it's not sustainable for for a long mm-hmm. period of time or for the rest of your life. And because I, I believe, and and that was a massive difference, that was a massive shift in my life. It's it's when I realized that when I was shielding myself. And protecting myself, you know, the protective bubble or the shield, etc. I was coming from a place of fear. I was coming from a place of disconnection because when I when I when I put a shield between me and and, and other people, I'm putting a wall, basically. Yes. So I am protecting myself, but I'm also not not connecting. I'm not a, not living. Yes. Yeah, so and and I just realized. 
this is not this is not a way to it's not sustainable to live like this because I, I believe empaths they, we have such a gift for connection to connect with other people because we feel what they feel we feel their emotions and and that is such a precious gift and when we are shielding ourselves because we are scared we are blocking that gift so I believe the way to go is to connect with your inner power it's to go into your heart. That's that's where your power is, and and believe that uh, you can choose if if you want to take the other person's energy into your body or not. That's just the first thing. I think the second thing is when you start working on your shadow, you know, it's called shadow work, and embracing your dark, the dark side of you, and 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 just allowing it, and, and just loving it as well because it's part of you and when you start doing that work you start having the need to to feel that darkness from from others you know that's all the negative energies that are going to make you drain and exhausted and etc because i i believe when you are taking everything in inside your body like a sponge it's like a call a wake-up call for for all of us to go inside ourselves and and do the work on ourselves it's like it's like they're being mirrors, you know, and yes. that's a lot of the work I do as well is to help help people how to to connect with their with their inner power, how to accept that dark side of of themselves, and just how to transmute that do the transmutation of that energy into positive energy.